I'm going to touch the pad. Yeah. In the world, fused. Now in crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, short video, something that I came across only recently and I've lived here in New Zealand for over 10 years now and I've towed trailers all over the place. But I picked up a Ford Ranger Ute about oh, two or three months ago and the first time I came to plug or hitch my trailer on I'm plugging the electrics, and this is a little fly lead because the trailer's from England, so this is the English plug, which is fantastic. And this is the New Zealand plug, which, to be perfectly honest, is absolutely shit. Yep, it is. Look, dead simple. Fantastic. Crap. Sorry to say it, but it is. So, I've put up with this because, you know, New Zealand vehicles tend to have... The, the female socket that matches this on and you end up buying a little fly lead like this and there was no way, absolutely no way that I was going to inflict my Eiffel Williams trailer with one of these crappy plugs. No way. Because, you know, one day I'll probably fit uh, the female English onto my vehicle like I put on the Nissan Patrol uh, and then I won't need to, you know, put up with this kind of stuff and all sorts of things fail on these let me just get a little pointy stick and I'll show you what I mean Ooh, and we got some new screwdrivers thanks Brandon right what happens with these little plugs is if you look really closely you can see that these little pins are split down the middle now that's fine so is the you know Similar kind of thing on the English ones, don't have a problem with that. Okay, given the fact that they're about a third the size, to wait for it, wait for it, compared to the English ones, they're really, really, really small, you know? Terrible. And obviously, over time, you've got to give these a little bit of a tweak to make contact again because they lose the springiness, and after a while, they snap off, and then you're completely stuffed. Anyway, this video isn't about that. This video is about the problem that I had plugging this in on the Ford Ranger Ute. And I'm going to go and take you outside now and show you the problem because it's something that really people that live in New Zealand, and I'm not sure if, if you've got the same kind of plug in your country, please add it to the comments because I've only seen these here in New Zealand. But they're probably, is it America? Does America use these? I don't know. Tell me. Anyway, let's head outside and I'll show you the issue. Right, so what we've got here is the standard fitment Ford female towing socket. And if I open the little flap up, you'll notice there are two rows of pins. Now that's okay, because the bottom row is for your standard plug, and the top row is for like your ancillaries. If you had a you know, a caravan, then you might have a fridge in there or batteries to charge up as you're driving around, which is great. I understand the, the, the philosophy behind the whole thing. And they've even made it so that it matches the normal single row trailer plug. So you can actually pop that in there, look, they all line up, which is great. It's sort of dual purpose. Well done, New Zealand. Very happy with that. Now, the problem arises when you close the lid. So, the plug is in, and we're driving down the road, and of course, you know, as you're turning corners, especially tight corners, the cable gets pulled, so, you know, we'll just replicate that, and there you go, look. The whole thing, basically, can move so far back that now, it doesn't really make any kind of contact, and ultimately, there you go, it falls to the ground, and then... The Kiwi plug gets ground away on the road. Fantastic. Okay, let's head back into the workshop and work out what the problem is. So, the little flappy thing at the top keys into these little two lugs here. And the problem, 
Ah, almost there, I jumped the gun. Right, I went out and I bought the plug that has the two rows. I thought, well, if this doesn't fit, we've got a serious problem. I thought, well, maybe it's a Ford thing, you know. Anyway, that's the orientation. So you've got the five large terminals, the high current terminals for running fridges and charging batteries and stuff. And then you've got down below, I think it's seven of the smaller ones, which match completely what we've got on the standard plug. Now, if I turn this around, I'm just going to close the flap, you'll see we've got this ridge along the top. And that ridge, basically, just like the two little tines there, it hooks into the lid. The lid sort of goes around the back. Now, if you measure the distance between, I noticed, if I try and line up the pins, can you see that there's about, oh, about a four or five mil difference between the back edge, that's the back edge here, of the two plugs. And the problem is that five millimeters is enough for these pins to wiggle out and pretty much stop making contact, or at least just start arcing away and burning and getting damaged. And it's just crap. So, on the one hand, fantastic for making it sort of reverse compatible, so to speak, so that it replicates the smaller pins. And you think, great, plugs in, off we go. It sort of lures you into a false sense of security. Because why on earth didn't they put these little hooks, you know, in the same place on the dual plug as on the single plug? And then that way, you could use one of these without having to put a piece of string or a bungee or something onto it to try and hold it plugged in all the time. Which is what I've been doing for the last three months. It's bloody ridiculous. So, I went out and finally found the time to buy this. And it's a Navara TP12F is the part number. You might just be able to make it out there, look. Okay. And this was the backing card for it. There you go. That's what came in there, look. And they've got a completely different part number, which is a 82171BL, just there. So, confusion reigns already. We've got two different part numbers for Navara. Nava. No, Nava, not Navara. Nava, look. Terrible. Okay, so, it's called a 12-pin flat plastic plug. That must be the official name for it. And on the back, it gives us all the different colour codes. So, let me just join you here a little bit. So what have we got? We've got, along the bottom is one, two, seven. And we're interested in the top ones. So eight, the larger pin, which we're not going to be using. Eight is battery charger or winch for orange. Fantastic, I like the winch idea. Auxiliaries, battery lead pink. Earth return, white, so we've got a big white in the middle. Rear fog light, grey, that's number 11. And more auxiliaries, violet. So there you go, if you ever need to wire one of these up and you've lost the card, or you just found the plug and not got a card with it, that tells you how to do it. It's fantastic, isn't it? And it says here, the small pins, here look, can cope with 15 amps. Down there, look, 15 amps. And the larger ones, in there, look, the five large ones along the top, they can cope with 35 amps at 12 volts. Brilliant. Okay, so you probably guessed that this part of the video is going to be now swapping out that plug for this plug. So, we should really get to it, shouldn't we? Here we go. Okay, first job, remove the old plug. So, we get that grommet off there if we can. There we are, look. Been on there for a while. It's I know I slate these things, but this one's done okay. Well done, Nava. But what really bugs me is the fact that they've, they've made the other plug take the same pins, but of course it can't stay in place. You know, Really, either make it fit completely and properly and be functional, or don't make it fit. Because the number of people that will plug it in, they get halfway down the road, and uh, realise that they've got a problem, Holy moly, what's going on here? Okay, well, black. 
Uh, I know blue's not in use. Okay, well everything worked, so that's good to know. But I'm pleased I got in here because it's not in the best condition, is it? Right, let's just pull off that little clamp. Which wasn't really very. I think it's been pulled through, hasn't it? By the looks of it, it's got tight at some point, and it's started to pull the wire out of the plug. Jeez. Okay. Right. Let's get these undone. Now you need to remember the colour codes, don't you? Because I'll only forget. But it's alright, because I've got a little crib sheet. We'll be fine. Now, normally, traditionally, I would have soldered these wires. But somebody, one of the one of the viewers, went absolutely mental with me for soldering the wires. I can't believe it. Okay, so that's the old one. We'll stick that over there. Fantastic. Now... Now for the new plug. It shouldn't take us too long, this, really. We'll get rid of the grommet. Now the, that's the screws that we need. Now, Mr. Grommet, let's not forget, Mr. Grommet has to go down. We'll get rid of that one. Has to go down here right now. If you forget to do this, which many, many people do, including me, then you've got to do it all over again, so it becomes just a practice run. Okay. Now... I think what we'll do is we'll trim, because quite a few of the, the little strands have broken off, so I'll get my, in fact, I'll get my Eric O wire strippers. Gosh, shout out to Eric now. Eric sent these across for tall girl Hannah, and she very kindly left them here with me in the workshop when she went to go and live in Australia. So if you live in Australia, look out for tall girl Hannah, because she's somewhere over there. And then tell her to get her ass back to New Zealand, please. Right. Okay. I'll tell the wife I said that, whatever you do. Otherwise I'd be in trouble. I'm always in trouble. Believe me, I am I live my life from one level of trouble to the next. Quite simple. Okay. If you're watching this tall girl, Hannah, I do miss you very much. No, I'm not gonna elaborate. Right. Okay, they're all trimmed off. Let's get the plug. And I know you're very close, but that's the best way of doing this kind of stuff. Okay, so five pin side, we're not interested. Seven pin side, we are. So let's just open all these up. And we'll just close off the ones that we're not going to use, because we don't need to use all of them. Oh man, it's even labelled, look. Signal, right, rear lamps... Reverse, don't need that. Earth. Service brakes, that's... Hey? Service brake, stop lamp. Well, they're both the same. Your service brake is your stop light, your numpty. So one of these is your tail light. We'll have a look on the diagram. Confusion range. You can see how people get these wrong, can't you? I don't, why they, don't label them up properly. I wonder how Ben's digging is going. Oh, Ben's doing some um, concreting today. So it's going to get real noisy later on. There we go. Okay, now, where's our little sheet? So this is labelled number one down here. And it says, signal left. So, let's look at the little card. And left hand turn is yellow. So, yellow should go in there. Pretty simple. Right, okay, Eric, which one should we choose? Let's try that one first. Don't want to... Oh, look at that, it's so good. Let's go one down a bit, see if that's going to work without chopping the wire. Bloody perfect, okay. And some people say don't twist the wires. I say to hell with you, you need to twist the wire if you're not going to solder it. Okay, let's just pop Mr. Yellow in there. Now you could strip them all at once, that's entirely your choice. Now don't over tighten these because you can snap them off, there we go. Right, now, number six, what does he say on the card for number six? Stoplight. Oh my god, service brakes, they've done the same thing. Service brakes and stop lamp. Where's tail? Reverse like that, right hand turn, four, 
rear lamp seven. Where's seven? No, seven's up there. Okay, right. So six. Stoplight red. Service. I don't want service brake. What's going on there? It's not very English. Right. There we go. Obviously, I will be testing this to make sure it's wired up right, but I'm pretty sure it is. When I've wired these things up in England and here, the red is always, always your stoplight. Brown is, well, brown and black actually sometimes for your tail lights. Okay, that's that one done. So we're going to miss out number five. And we're going to do the earth, which is the white. It's always the white. Which really used to confuse me when I was a kid. Uh, to me, black was always ground, but not earth. Right, so pop him in there, look. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly messed that one up. Try again. Now, there is a video, actually, talking to tall girl Hannah of Hannah wiring up one of these plugs but they not the twin just the single row plug and she made a fantastic job of it and that was actually when she had a debut run of using these pliers so if you want to meet tall Hannah or at least see what she's all about check out that video now number two reverse signal we don't have a reverse rear lamps that's going to be brown Get that one stripped. There we go. I do like these pliers, Eric. Thank you very much. If you've not uh, come across Eric's channel, well, first of all, you must have been living under a rock because Eric is extremely popular on YouTube now. That's Eric O at the South Main Altar channel. In uh, where is he? Avoca pronounced it wrong. Avoca? Avoca? I don't know. I'm a Yorkshireman. Right, let's get that one time. So yeah, check out his videos. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos on his channel and he's, an, he's a fantastic um, motor vehicle engineer, I would say. He's far more than a mechanic. He's very... Uh, oh, what's the word? I don't know. He doesn't like to promote himself too much but he's doing a fantastic job very very impressed with his channel and find his videos very entertaining and I watch every single one of them I really do I have no idea what Benjamin's doing now I think he's going to start mixing concrete right last one screwdriver There we go. Okay, so our next job, because we don't need those two wires, so we can just fold those back. And they're not connected at the other end either, so we'll just leave those there, because, you know, if, if we have a problem out on the road, we might be able to utilize those, or one of those, to as a supplement to a damaged wire, just to get home. I know the colors are wrong, but it, if it makes the lights work, it's all that matters, isn't it? Okay, what have we got in here? Right, well we only need half this stuff because again we're only doing one side. We need to put some screws in there. Can you see okay? Hopefully you can. And look, brilliant, all the screws are the same spec. Now that's good. Means you can't get them wrong. Oh, it's going to save so much time hitching that trail on every time, not having to put a bloody bungee around it. Right, now I am, I'm just going to put this other clamp in this side, just so it's not lost into the abyss of crap that's under the bench. Because maybe one day, maybe one day we're going to be, um, we might use this side of the plug. I don't know. Right, get that in there. Now one of the problems with these plugs is corrosion. So I'm going to get some 
spray grease and just spray it on there before we put the cover on, which is that cover there, look like that. Okay, bit of spray grease. Right, said Fred. So a bit of, bit of spray grease in there, we don't want this thing to corrode too quickly, do we? We don't want to corrode it all, really, we can help it. Right, now, the lid. There we go, look, it says there, look. Plug seven pin side, so plug seven pin side. That goes on there. Couple more screws. Dum -de -dum -dum -dum. I've got an LT300 engine to strip down to there. We'll go do an autopsy on it because, um, well, it looks like it's got a major gearbox failure. Right. That's that one. Now we need to put the. We'll just put some spray on these as well. I know, I know we're not using them, but it would. It'll stop them from corroding in case we decide to use them later on. There we go. Okay. Stick that on there. Cool. Feels about right. One. Yeah, Ben has now started officially cement mixing, concrete mixing. He's got a long day ahead of him. Right, that is now done. So we'll just sneak the little grommet up on there. Oh, perfect, look at that. Right, one last thing to do. I'm going to stick a bit of spray grease in there as well. There we go. Okay, right, back to the Ford Ranger and let's see if this is held in better than this crappy thing. Right, said Fred. Hopefully I've set it up so that you can see side on what's going on here. So I'll open the plug here with the flap. Open that one and it's little ones to the bottom. There we go. And you can see this edge of the flap here should key in against the back of here, back edge of this. Well, it does. It's better. It can still move about three mil, but it can't fall out. And it's actually a lot more positive with it having the more terminals. I suppose. Well, there is a bit of a step here as well. So it's not bad. It's not going to fall out. That's for sure. Cool. Very happy with that. Right, back to the workshop. So, there you go, a real quick short video on the problems of using a standard single row New Zealand trailer uh, plug in a dual New Zealand trailer socket. Yes, the pins line up. No, it won't stay in there very long. There's your issue. So if you have a twin socket, uh, you know, tw twin row socket, then you should get yourself a twin row plug. Quite simple. And I've shown you how to wire it up. And yes, it does work. Okay, well, don't forget to uh, put a little bit of spray grease on the terminals, or you know, even just normal grease is fine, or that uh, battery terminal spray is pretty cool for that. And it can be done. Sure can. Oh, and one last thing. Thank you to Eric O again for the use of his wire stripper terminal crimper snap-on pliers very very useful and I would never have bought any of these but now I've got some I think they're great cheers Eric appreciate that okay crew well if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful why not click on the subscribe button you'll see a little gear icon turn up click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications if you're on a smart device just ring the bell it's the same thing and our friends at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos and there's usually one a week, hopefully. Now, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. There's also my Andy Mechanic email address embedded in the video description, along with lots of other information about how you can buy these shirts and so on. Uh, they're very good, actually. I thoroughly recommend them. And uh, if you would like to become a patron to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, you can do that through uh, Patreon. 
Oh, you'll find on the Patreon page information about the history of the channel, how it came to be, profiles on all the various tool girls with hundreds and hundreds of photos that you can download. There's even a couple of short videos of behind the scenes stuff uh, and you can donate through that portal and become a patron of the channel. If you do, then obviously I will mention you in the next future mail call video and I think we're going to start to add current and future patrons to the credits at the end of each video, but I've not yet quite got around to doing that, so when I get time, I'll organise it. Okay, crew, well, thank you again very much for watching, and if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be making these videos. Until next time, cheers, over and out. Ha <laughs> <laughs>